Good morning. Heaven came down and glory filled my soul. I don't think sometimes we realize what a predicament we're in, do we? We think we've got this, this all figured out. In uh, 2 Samuel chapter 19, we're back over there this morning. I know last time we talked about what mean you by these stones over in Joshua 4 and uh, the monument that the people built in Gilgal there after they come out of the Jordan River. We're going to come back over and continue in 2 Samuel this morning and, and look at this. I trust you had a good week in the Lord. I trust you had a good week in the Lord. I did. Trying week. It was a rough week at times. But as John says, it's what the Lord has for us. <laughs> Bow and worship in all of that. Yeah. I want to start here. We've, we've touched on this before here. David now has, has defeated the forces of Absalom. Absalom's dead. And there's strife amongst the people. Remember, we talked about strife. And I want to remind you again, this is not Philistines. This is not the world. This is the nation of Israel itself at war with itself. Y'all ever seen strife within the body of believers? What they've done here is they've let another man lead them astray. They changed their love and their affection for a false king. Their false king is dead. Listen, God's defeated the world. Said he's going to make the enemy his footstool. Have we acknowledged that? They realize that and there's strife amongst them as to what to do. But let's start here again in verse 9. And all the people were at strife throughout all the tribes of Israel, saying, The king saved us out of the hand of our enemies, and he delivered us out of the hand of the Philistines. And now he has fled out of the land for Absalom. And Absalom, who, whom we anointed over us, is dead in battle. Now therefore, why speak ye not a word of bringing the king back? And King sent Zadok, and, and, king, and the king David sent to Zadok and to Abiathar the priest, saying, Speaking to the elders of Judah, saying, Why are ye the last to bring the king back to his house? Seeing the speech of all Israel has come to the king, even to his house. Ye are my brethren, ye are my bones and my flesh. Wherefore then are ye the last to bring back the king? Why are we the last a lot of times? Listen, this is a backslidden condition here as it's called. That time of coldness. They changed their affections. They found something new. Hey, let's bring in this new king. He'll bring in the young people. He'll let me sing at church what I want to sing. He'll let me use whatever Bible I want to use. It's something new and fresh and they changed their affections. Demas have forsaken me having loved this present world. You know, David, he defeated all those enemies, yet his own desires defeated him. My enemies, I know who they are. And every morning I walk by and look in the mirror and I see another enemy and I don't acknowledge him. I think he's good looking. He's got us all figured out. Why am I the last to bring the king back? This ain't for the world. The natural man receiveth not. That's why they keep rewriting this into other versions. They, they want to water it down so the goats will enjoy it. This is, this is for the sheep here. Why are you the last to bring the king back? David Toss says, you're bone, you're bone of my bone and flesh of my flesh here. And say ye, let's pick this up here in verse, uh, verse 13. And say ye to Amasa, art thou not of my bone and of my flesh? God do so to me, and more also, if thou be not captain of the host, before me continually in the room of Joab. And he bowed the heart of all the men of Judah, even as the heart of one man, so that they sent this word unto the king, Return thou and all thy servants. 
So the king returned and came to Jordan, and Judah came to Gilgal to go meet to meet the king, to conduct the king over Jordan. Verse 14 again there, And he bowed the heart of all the men of Judah, even as the heart of one man. So they sent this word unto the king, Return thou and all thy servants. David bowed the heart of the men. Listen, aren't you glad God bowed your heart? If you think you chose Him, you better know the reason you chose Him is because He first chose you. He revealed Himself to you first. Heaven came down. I, I, that was just perfect for this because we couldn't get up there. When the Savior reached down for me, He had to reach way down. Have you ever thought about that? Listen, David here is wanting to return to the people, but not as the captain of the hosts of an army. He's wanting to return as the prince on invitation. And so he uses the interest in his speech to cause it such that the men bow their hearts to him. He didn't send this message to the world, did he? This was not sent out to the Philistines. This was sent out to his own people. Listen, if we're in this and we can see this, we ought to be shouting this morning. Listen, God, through His providence, we cast the lots, but the disposing thereof is of the Lord. It's not by happen chance we're here this morning. Go to Ephesians chapter 2. Now, one of the things that these men here, were the predicament the tribe of Judah and all these tribes were in, they had been rebellious to David their leader was dead so how do you approach how do you approach David how do you make amends how do you reconcile how do we approach a holy God how do we reconcile to him hmm y'all see this do you see the likeness here we can't get to him heaven had to come down we couldn't get up there Heaven had to come down here. Now this is Paul, uh, Paul writing to the church at Ephesus here in verse 1 of chapter 2. And you hath he quickened who were dead in trespasses and sin, where in time past you walked according to the course of this world, according to the prince of the power of the air, the spirit that now worketh in the children of disobedience, among whom also we had our conversation in times past in the lusts of our flesh fulfilling the desires of the flesh and of the mind and were by nature the children of wrath even as others but God but God who is rich in mercy for his great love wherewith he loved us even when we were dead in sins hath quickened us together with Christ by grace ye are saved. Listen, David loved his people despite their past. This says here in past times. In past times. Any of y'all got a past that ain't pretty? Yeah, let's be moving along. We all have a past. Every saint has a past, and as it said, every sinner has a future. God in his rich mercy bowed our hearts as one, as David did. Bowed the hearts of the people. Made us interested in this. Then people had no way to reconcile to David, so David had to reconcile with them. Made a Mesa captain of the host. What are we promised here? That we will rule and reign together with Christ. Rule and reign with him. Bone of my bone. Flesh of my flesh. Listen, I hope this excites you this morning to see that through Christ, despite our past, despite our rebellion, He says, why are you the last? Why are you the last to return the king to his throne? Hey, I've defeated Absalom. What are you waiting on? I love that, you know, if I'm not here, there's something in here that bothers me. 
I love that when I'm not where I'm supposed to be, there's something in there that starts pulling me back. It says, why are you the last to put me back on the throne? And when the devil comes and says, you're not in this, I'm like, well, then why are you here? Why are you here bothering me then if I'm not in this? Why can't I go out there and be like the world, like the Philistines? You know why? Because I've been adopted into the tribe of Judah. He bowed our heart so that we'd accept him as king. Because when he comes in as the warrior, guess what he's going to do? The line of the tribe of Judah, it's not going to be pretty. There will be a war and there will be a defeat. There was a war here. David, David defeated Absalom, or David's forces did. Jesus, Jesus and the Holy Ghost being dispatched by the Father come and say, why are you the last to make him king? I want to challenge us this morning to rejoice in this. Rejoice that we can see this. Rejoice that he bowed our hearts. I hope you can see this. I hope it's a blessing to you. Listen, just because we were rebellious in the past, he still loved us. Just as David loved his people here. He wanted to come back and be their king. His desire was to be their king. And if you've gone away this morning, you feel cold, or you think you're backslidden, we all go through that. Listen, I have weeks where it feels like heaven's made of brass. To get the broom and sweep my prayers off the ceiling. You have to keep pressing into this. Donald talked about trying to get this music working. And I told him, that he shared the difficulties, and I told him when we tried to do the video, all the stuff that we fought to get that working. If you're going to do anything right in this, there's going to be obstacles. Ask Nehemiah. Start building a wall. Two men showed up, Sam Ballant and Tobias. So they fought with one hand and had a hammer in the other. Listen, folks, a lot of times that's how I know I'm where I'm supposed to be, and I know that the king is where he needs to be in my life. Let's examine ourselves this morning. Who's in Jerusalem? Have we put Absalom there? Are we pursuing our agenda? Listen, Absalom promised these people everything they wanted, and they fell for it. Or a false king. Like I said, this ain't Philistines. This is God's people. I'm afraid, you know, in our, uh, we got churches all across this country where Absalom's king. We got people, true believers, that have set Absalom up as king. They got tired of the cross. They got tired of the cross. Again, Bring back the king. Bring back the king. Bring back the king. That sounds easy, don't it? But our old flesh fights this. It's, yeah, it won't never love this. But that tells me I'm on, listen, straight is the way and narrow is the gate. And few there be. And few there be. I love y'all. I hope I've been a blessing to you this morning.